This is Bishop George Murray. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you today and to welcome you as we gather in the Lord's presence to hear the word and to celebrate the Eucharist. Mindful also of the Lord present within us, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us this day with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us join the angels in their hymn of praise. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, 
Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing to Elisha the man of God, 20 barley loaves made of the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elisha said, give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, how can I set this before a hundred people? Elisha insisted, give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. God answers.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call to which you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called into the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise to the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise to the Lord. A great prophet has risen in our midst. God has visited his people. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, you know, Jesus was probably the most popular and perhaps the most hated person that ever lived. You know, his countless followers tell us how much he is loved and how popular he is. And yet his cross reminds us how deeply he was hated. 
Well, today's gospel tells of the time when Jesus was really at the height of his popularity. It's really a sequel from last weekend's readings. If you recall, those were the readings where Jesus wanted to plan a vacation for himself and his disciples. And when they did, the crowd actually followed them to their deserted place. And so Jesus spent the better part of the day teaching the people. Well, in the end, which is today's gospel, Jesus became concerned that the people might leave that place without food. And the problem was how to feed that many people without some advanced preparation. Well, Andrew comes forward and said, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and a few fish. Now, Jesus took those meager provisions and fed the vast crowd. Now, among the miracle stories of Jesus, this is the only one reported in all four Gospels. Now, of course, each sacred writer essentially tells the same story, but St. John adds this one element of the little boy that actually makes it my favorite. You know, all of the others simply make it an adult story. As a matter of fact, Matthew goes so far as to say, those who ate were about 5,000, not counting women and children. Since when do women and children not count? Now, if we consider children first, women second, and men third, we might do a better part of living in this world. You know, I mean to talk to St. Matthew about that one day, but that's another story. Now, the thing I really like about St. John's account is that the spotlight is on a child, the real hero of today's story. And it's a fact overlooked by Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Now, of course, unfortunately, in recent years, we have become fully aware of the problem of child abuse right here in our, in our own communities, our, our world, our society, our institutions. You know, children are always innocent victims of abuse, of war, of politics. You know, 400 years before Christ, the Greek writer Euripides presented in Athens a drama that he entitled The Trojan Woman. It really was a protest against war. Now, as symbolic, he placed on center stage not a soldier, but a bedraggled woman holding a dead baby. Now, we would label Euripides a pagan, but he understood the tragedies of war more than many of us who call ourselves Christians. You know, another thing that I really like about St. John's account is that it recognizes the potential of a child. You know, five barley loaves and a couple of dry fish are really not a whole lot. But in the hands of Jesus, it was more than enough. And that's not sentimentality. That's really a fact of salvation history. You know, when the Hebrew people were in bondage, there was a baby who was born to a young couple. And because of persecutions, in order to save his life, they sailed him down the Nile River in a wicker basket. He was found by Pharaoh's daughter. His name was Moses. And because of that baby, a band of slaves threw off their chains and became the nation of Israel. In 1809, in a log cabin in Kentucky, a baby was born to Tom and Nancy Lincoln. They named him Abraham. Because of that baby, slavery was abolished in the United States of America. In the year 1820, 
in the ancient city of Florence, Italy. A baby was born to wealthy English parents, and they named her after the city of her birth. Florence Nightingale became the mother of modern nursing, and she literally transformed hospital procedures and programs which advanced in the Western world. We should never underestimate the potential of a child. I think the last thing that our story tells us that I particularly like is that it sets a pattern for us to follow. Now, Bible scholars have wondered across the centuries how Jesus could feed thousands of people with just a handful of bread and some fish. Well, one interpretation was that people actually brought food that day, but they were afraid to let anyone know lest the hungry crowd gobble up their food. But when the little boy came forward and presented his lunch, it proved their selfishness and they began to share from their want. And everyone was fed, and there were 12 baskets left over. Who knows what can happen when people engage in a spirit of caring and sharing? I have no doubt that the needs of all people would be met. Now, in the midst of that great crowd that day, Andrew made a saving discovery. He said, there's a boy here with five loaves of bread and some fish. You and I need to make that same discovery in our world today. Let us please stand and together profess the faith that we all share. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Humbly now let us present to God our special petitions. For the church, that we may be confident in God's unlimited mercy and his unbounded providence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of generosity, that we may be free to share the blessings, the wisdom, and the hope God has given us with all who hunger and thirst for a fuller life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are recovering from volcanoes, earthquakes, floods, or wildfires, that God will give them strength, help them to have a vision for rebuilding their lives, and give them hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, for Bishop Murray and for all those in our community who are ill, God will relieve them of their pain and affliction. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, particularly in Syria, Yemen, and Palestine, God will bring an end to violence, 
turn hearts toward dialogue, and protect the innocent from harm, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we pray the intentions of this Mass, let us remember Jack Carbon, for whom this liturgy is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God in heaven, we praise and thank you for your countless blessings. As we seek to serve you by sharing those blessings with those most in need, one day welcome us to the fullness of your peace in heaven. We make this prayer in the spirit through Christ our Lord. And let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord sacrifice for the praise and glory of the name of our Lord Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ your Son. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Paul, Blessed James Alberioni and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. And with Let us share with those around us a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Body of Christ. 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 One bread, one body. One cup, one call. One faith, one spirit. Before our closing prayer and final blessing, I just have a few brief announcements. I had the opportunity, I believe Brother Pascal was there too on Friday evening, to uh, see a wonderful play, Jesus Christ Superstar, at Crestview High School in Columbiana. And if you have an opportunity to see it, it airs to, it shows today, this afternoon, and also next weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And if you want more information, I'm sure you could uh, go online. Uh, or contact uh, Crestview High School for more information. It was a wonderful production. Also a reminder that next Sunday, there is a pancake breakfast, I believe at St. Michael's in Canfield, and it begins at 10 o'clock, and I believe it ends at one, and it's sponsoring um, the Knights of Columbus, which are held here uh, at St. Paul's Monastery. I'd like to thank you for coming to celebrate Mass today. I wish you a blessed Sunday and a safe week. Let us stand and pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Take the Word of God with you as you go.